Well, first thing, honestly, is, oh, here we go again. The Berserker Sword just racked my brain and made me actually work, which is actually pretty fun to bring all of my skills to the fore between metal shaping, fabrication, uh, welding, setting everything up, fitting everything for John to get at. It was just a really fun build, and it's also monstrous. Man, it will draw it out about where I want, then I might cut it and do the other half depending on what it looks like. So we'll be going back and forth, back and forth, and then once I got it tapered out where I want, then I'm gonna bend it over here to get this kind of shape to it. Yeah. So most of the pieces I'm making are pretty straightforward and not terribly complicated, so I've kind of got the easier part of it on this build. A lot of the heavy lifting is the guys are doing, you know, especially Derek and Ellen doing the, the metal, the sheet metal forming. That's and these other pieces, uh, the rest of the guys are making. They're really doing the heavy lifting on this one. But if we do the eyes now, it's likely that you're going to have a cross-eyed lion. <laughs> and nobody wants a cross-eyed lion. Well, The challenge of it, like trying to build something as complex as what we're doing in like a week is just absurd and I love it. I love the absurdity of it. So Carrie told me about these lion heads and I was actually super stoked. He was geeking out. He's like, this is going to be 900 hours of chasing Repose and we're all going to die and we're never going to finish. I'm like, this is going to be cool. You gotta bleep that. But I said this is gonna be really cool. And uh, I was stoked about it. I love raising and chasing and repose. I love all that stuff. And this is the biggest thing I've ever done in chasing repose. So I was like super stoked about it. It's definitely a team effort with this, with Ellen and I. Uh, like I said, sometimes I'm having a bad time, sometimes she's having a bad time. And, the other is always there to kind of pick up the slack. Like the challenges are figuring out how to make the forms and raise it in a pragmatic way. And right now we're working on two separate animal heads made by two separate people. So we had to keep keep a similar pace and like similar process in order to get the outcome to not be completely different. Because you have two different people making things, they are gonna have more or less inherently different styles. Even if I made two of them, they would be slightly different anyway, but having two people make something, they're going to end up with a little different, like, flair to them. The worst part is over, unless someone drops them on their faces, then they'll get very squished, and then, then that would be bad. The challenges that go into building a sword that big and trying to work off of regular, you can't really work from regular sword building dynamics. Like, it is almost a sculpture in the way that it's built. It's not like building a, an axe or a, a two-handed falchion or anything else like that. It doesn't really run that same forward thought. So you have to change how you build things to cover a four and a half inch span that goes to two and a half inch span. Um, that thickness all the way down, you have to engineer both those sides to match up and everything has to sit just right. I think it's definitely one of the more complicated pieces we've done. Chaos Eater was pretty complicated. Um, the Soul Calibur pieces were very complicated, um, especially doing Soul Calibur itself. Um, Prime again, multiple pieces, big seven foot sword. I think this just is gonna have a lot more detail, so it's gonna be interesting to see how it comes about.
click the logo to subscribe, or click one of the videos to see more here on the Baltimore Knife and Sword channel, or go to Almy and watch Man at Arms.